All right, everybody, this is lesson six, uh, strength of acids and bases. So we're going to talk about electrolytes and then uh, the difference between weak and strong aqueous solutions of acids and bases. And then we're going to predict some of the products of an acid-base reaction the, and think about that in re reference to equilibrium. So uh, we have, uh, we have this first definition, the electrolytes definition. So, uh, electrolytes is just a general term for anything that, um, any solution that has ions in it. Uh, so, um, we, of course, uh, as human beings, uh, we need electrolytes to survive, uh, everything from your, the way your, uh, brain works to the way that your cells work. That's all based on charges uh, or of ions dissolved in, in solution. These are, so our blood counts as an electrolyte solution because it has dissolved salts. But also electrolytes are used in things like electrochemistry, which is our next unit. So in, the, uh, in electrochemistry, the transfer of electricity or the movement of electricity is, is assisted by a solution of ions. So uh, all acids and bases produce electrolytic solution uh, unless there's a perfect neutralization. But even in neutralization, we should have a salt that's produced. So it will still be electrolytic. Um, so anything with, a, with dissolved ions is electrolytic. Pure water, on the other hand, not electrolyte because pure, very, very pure water has very little uh, ions in it. It has, uh, we know how many ions it has. It has 1 times 10 to the negative 7 ions. That's from that KW expression. So our KW expression does tell us there are a little bit of ions in there, but those ions are, uh, are pretty much um, in sub inconsequential. The wa pure water does not dissolve, does not tr uh, pass electricity through it very easily. Uh, so, you know, this is the, the moment here. It's solution to, in order for a solution to conduct an electrical current, then it must have charged particles. All right. Um, the uh, other solutions like oils, oils would not, or oils are not solutions, but liquids like oils that have no charge, those would be also non-electrolytic. So oils, uh, pretty terrible, in, uh, ter is a, a strong insulator, it's a terrible conductor. Um, and even sugar water, uh, sugar does not, uh, does not ionize when it goes into water. It stays as a molecule. It just simply dissolves and separates. And so, uh, sugar, since it has no charge is not very electrolytic either. Okay. Uh, so a strong electrolyte, these are ones that have high dissociation. Uh, they create high concentrations of ions, uh, and, we are usually looking for something that has a complete dissociation. So uh, any of our, our things with high uh, solubility, those would be strong electrolytes. So sodium chloride or uh, HCl. Um, I don't know. What else, can we, what else do we have? Anything like uh, any of the, uh, the, uh, the bases too, KOH maybe. Uh, meanwhile, uh, weak electrolytes are ones that do not have as high a dissociation. So we could think about uh, acetic acid. Uh, this one, uh, it has a dissociation constant, so it, re it releases very few, uh, few ions. Uh, also, anything that's got a low, low solubility, so uh, lead chloride, for example, not a great electrolyte. It has a, a very low solubility in water. So low dissociation, low number of ions in solution. Strong acids, uh, these are any, an acid is a substance that donates protons. We've said that before. Strong acids are substances that easily donate them. So these are our strong acids. We've been talking about them for a while. Um, and of course, because they completely ionize in the water, that makes them strong electrolytes. So strong acids are usually strong electrolytes because they ionize completely. Weak acids or weak electrolytes, uh, anything that has an equilibrium in it, it's not going to be a strong acid. So here's a little sort of drawing that I made. Think about uh, this sort of solution here. You've got some ions of HCl that are floating around. You can think about these ions as being separated and they're bouncing around all over the place. So when we apply electrical, electrical charge, these uh, chlorines actually can move around. Uh, you know, even the, uh, probably what moves more is the protons because they're smaller, but they will move around and they'll actually flow from side to side of the container uh, with the flow of electricity. 
Meanwhile, over here in HF, HF being a weak acid, we only have a few ions to move around. So they kind of have to try to work their way through these other molecules. There's only a few of them. And so we don't have very much ion movement here. You've got, you know, a whole bunch of ions that can be moving all the time. HF, not nearly as many. So less ions moving, less good electricity conduction, and so a less good electrolyte. And so this is the, you know, <clears throat> strong electrolyte. Electrolyte. Weak. Weak. Strong. Okay. So strong bases are also substances that have high affinity for protons. Strong bases are usually strong electrolytes. That is, they completely dissociate. Uh, they're usually producing the OH minus or oxide ions, uh, etc. So here's, uh, here's our strong bases. Uh, no, even though magnesium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide are hydroxides, we don't consider them strong bases because of their solubility. If you go back to the solubility unit, you can look up the solubility of potassium and or magnesium and calcium hydroxide. You'll find that they're very low, and so in that case, they become uh, they become a weak electrolyte. Uh, what else do we have to say here? Weak bases, of course. Anything that has an equilibrium is also going to be a weak electrolyte. And uh, let's look at this table. So here is a table of weak and strong acids. This is the same table we saw earlier. So strong acids at the top here, uh, strong acids producing weak bases, weak uh, strong acids to uh, weak acids. And remember that a strong acid will ha will produce a weak base. Uh, so and then a weak acid will produce a strong base, and the middle acid will produce a middle base. So these are, so um, the the proportional strength of the acid is, is going to be inversely proportional to the strength of the base. So anything in this middle zone is going to be a bad, you know, anything, uh, let's think about probably around here up to, I don't remember what, uh, at least hydrogen carbonate uh, for sure, even well, water's down here, so obviously water is not a great option here. So all of these are are very weak. Um, these are all considered uh, weak electrolytes. So these are weak electrolytes. I feel like I might have misspoke here. Let's see, we got weak acids, strong bases, strong acids, weak bases, um, middle strength acids, middle strength bases. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we're good. Um, all right. Here's a, even a hydroxide ion that's losing, you know, hydroxide ion losing its proton. Uh, very unfavorable reaction, right? But this oxide, this dissolved oxide ion would be very strong base. It'd be, it would be grabbing um, up some acids really quick. Oh, all right. And so, uh, you know, this uh, this table here is actually, um, I tried to do it originally with uh, with KAs, which we don't, haven't even covered yet. Um, what all they wanted to do in this problem was to take our table and look it up. And so if we look up HNO2 uh, on the table, we see it's right in the middle. So we can call that sort of a middle strength acid. Uh, OH is a very weak acid. So this is probably, this is our weakest acid. So if we're gonna go strong to strong acid, and let's go weak acid here. So we have our OH minus, and uh, then I think I, see, I saw HTE, yeah, HTE is right here. And uh, looks like, the weird thing is like, a, why, where is the acetic acid? Why didn't they include that? Uh, HCO3 and then uh, HPO4 uh, right here. So we've got so we got our we got pretty much our set. HPO4 two minus and then we have uh, HTE telluric acid and uh oh the second the second proton off of tellurium hydride then uh we had the hco3 so that's the uh, the loss of the second hydrogen on carbonate very very weak 
uh, reaction there. And then HNO2. I almost would guess uh, we don't see uh, we didn't ha we don't have uh, acetic acid on here. Hmm, um, acetic acid I'm fairly certain is is above uh, hydrofluoric acid, so uh, it's a little strange that they haven't included it. Oh, also this is the ion of acetic acid. It's actually the the inverse of acetic acid, so the, we'd have to depend on that as a base, I suppose. We could make the conclusion that because this does not have a hydrogen ready to donate, and all of these other ones do, uh, then C2H3O8O2 minus is the weakest acid. It does not have a hydrogen. It's sort of a trick question there. Now the important trick here is that you can go on the other side of this, and we can say that these are weak bases. Uh, you notice that there's no room for a hydrogen, so that makes it a very bad base. Uh, on this uh, HNO2. There's no extra hydrogen space on there, but uh, it can stuff one on there if it has to, but it probably won't want to. Uh, meanwhile, over here, uh, the C2H3O2, uh, it has a negative charge. It's ready to accept a proton uh, right away. So that's going to make it a strong base. At least stronger than than hydroxide. Uh, hydroxide being the conjugate a conjugate base of water. Uh, complete the reaction and indicate the acids and bases in which direction they went. Um, I'm already starting to think about Ka's here, so uh, we don't need to go with that. So actually, let's uh, let's start this problem again. I'm gonna just get rid of this because I want to do it the right way. Okay. Got too excited and did some work ahead of time. All right. So uh, what they're actually asking here is look at the base and the base versus uh, acid strength. So notice here that this uh, this molecule does not have any hydrogens, right? No hydrogens, no hydrogens to donate. So that means it must act act as a base. That's a base. To be fair, this this uh, this carbonate ion uh, does have a, ne a negative and it does have a proton, so it could act as either a base or an acid. But uh, it does have a hydrogen, has a hydrogen, hydrogen, so can donate, which means it's an acid. And so this means that the hydrogen is going to be donated to the PO4. This will give us three CO3 minus, and probably we should be putting some phase symbols on here, and uh, HPO4 two minus. Uh, oh, I made a small error here. If you've lost a proton, your charge must increase, and if you've lost a if you've gained a proton, the charge must decrease. This seems like a good move uh, for the system because now instead of having a negative one and a negative three, the system has two negative two, two charged ions. That's probably more stable um, unless that negative one ion was very, very stable. But this is probably a more stable system. Remember that PO, that, um, that phosphate, phosphoric acid has three hydrogens at its maximum. Uh, it can be, you can, you know, buy it off the shelf as H3PO4. So losing uh, all, every time you lose a proton, it's going to become more energetically unfavorable to lose the next one. So this was probably a very unfavorable system. And in fact, we probably would guess that the system is, is aimed this way. Uh, pretty strongly in the in the right direction. But, uh, you know, that would that would depend. Let's go look at our table and see if we can figure it out. Uh, we will depend on them be, them providing us with the PO4. Ah, so here's PO4. So they did give it to us. Uh, it's considered a strong base, and it is a stronger base than CO3 2 minus, right? So look at this. This is a stronger base, stronger base. And so in this case, if there is a proton available, if there's one hydrogen that can be given up, it will go to the stronger base. So in this case, the direction, the, uh, the PO4, P4, 
PO4 3 minus is a stronger base base than CO3 2 minus. So in this little tug of war here between, you know, the tug of war between the hydrogen on this side, on the right, on the, uh, so on the left, the carbonate is winning and on the right, the, pro the phosphate is winning. Well, if the phosphate is a stronger base, then it will win the contest. It is, a, it's better at this stronger base implies that it's better at bonding uh, protons. And so th in this way, we can actually, we can predict that this is, this reaction will in fact have a very strong forward reaction and a, a minimal uh, reverse reaction. Okay, uh, let's maybe look at one more. Uh, let's see if we can find another system that's interesting. Uh, let's see, do we have aluminum hydroxide or aluminum aqueous al aluminum? Is that one on our list? No, not sure how you're gonna do that one. Okay, uh, let's go with complete the acid base and let's go with this system here. So this is a good example. So here we have another acetic acid situation. The acetic acid is, uh, cannot donate protons, so it is definitely a weak, uh, it is definitely a very weak uh, acid. There's no more protons to take off. Uh, now, if you're yelling at me and saying, well, there's three protons right there, remember that the structure is CH3, COO, and then O minus. These protons on methyl are all very, very strongly bonded to the carbon. This is a, this is a, uh, covalent bond. There's no breaking those bonds uh, very easily. It's a, it's one of the one of the more difficult uh, bonds to break. Meanwhile, the HSO4, uh, what that is, that looks like is it's an SO4 sort of like this. One of them has a negative charge, and then the other one has the hydrogen hanging off of it. So this hydrogen over here is very quick. Is quite far from the center of mass. So if we think about sort of electrons gathering near the center, uh, this hydrogen is far off to the side, and so we don't really have to worry about it. Uh, it's just hanging on the side there, and, uh, and it's uh, ready to be, it's, it's more freely available to react. So we're gonna transfer the hydrogen over. There's no hydrogens to move on the carbonate, so on the acetic acid, so we have to transfer from the, uh, from the uh, sulfate and uh, we're going to be left with an ion. Think about the, con the movement of charge here. We're going to get SO4 2 minus at the end. Uh, the acetic acid is going to get is getting that proton so it's going to be uh, neutralized. And so let's go back up and see if we can find any information about SO4. I see SO3. And I see SO4 here. So HSO4, look at that. Oh, it's really close to the strong acid section. So as a strong acid, that means it's a strong proton donor. And so we can predict that it's going to be very easy to remove that, hot, that proton. And so again, removing the proton, the donating of the proton is the forward reaction. And the reverse reaction is going to be minimal. So forward is favored is favored. Okay, uh, hopefully that helps a, a little bit. We'll be coming back 